Hello and welcome to another lesson on room acoustics here. And my name is Wilson Harwood and I am an acoustician and home recording studio designer based in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm gonna teach you all about some new research uh, that recently came out saying that the length to width ratio matters more in the room acoustics than does the length to height or the width to height ratio. Meaning that our ceiling height can be the least contributing factor to our design when it comes to getting the right ratios for our home recording studios. And this is really gonna be awesome for those of you trying to design home recording studios where that dang ceiling height is always the problem with those room ratio calculators. So I'm gonna explain kind of a little bit about what this new research is uh, and how it relates to us as studio designers and uh, hopefully you'll find it interesting and helpful. Before we jump in, I do have a free resource for you. This is my free acoustic treatment guide. It goes over the basics of home recording studio acoustics. I guarantee you're gonna get great results with this guide. It's what I've been using for years. And yes, there's fancier, more technical ways to get the acoustics in your room dialed in, but I guarantee you this is gonna be the most affordable and effective way that you can do it. To download that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com acoustic. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, enough of me jabbering and rambling on here. Let's jump into this lesson on these new room ratios. All right, first off, let's talk a little bit about the science of room ratios. I've made lots of videos on this, but I'm assuming this is maybe your first video you've seen of mine. So I'm gonna go over room ratios. And for those of you who are still confused about room ratios, don't skip this section because it's a really great analogy of how they work. And I hope it simplifies things. So first off, we need to understand what the heck a room mode is. And room ratios and room modes go hand in hand and room modes, on a very basic idea of what they are is that they're just resonances caused by the sound waves bouncing in your room. And those resonances can create peaks and nulls. Meaning if you walk around your room in the, especially in the low frequency, which is what we're worried about with room ratios and room dimensions is that you'll walk around the room and let's say you're playing like a 80 Hertz bass tone in your room. You'll hear that tone get louder and softer depending on where you are in the room. Now for listening back to music and recording music, this is a problem because now we have an 80 Hertz part of the instrument or voice that you're recording or the music you're listening back to that's not gonna be accurate depending on where you are in the room. And that can really affect how we hear the timbre of our instruments and also the quality of our mixes when we are recording. So how do we understand room modes on an even deeper level? Now, this is something I want to talk, show you that I think will be helpful. Uh, and I've been spending a lot of time with my one year old daughter. So this is why I have this analogy on my mind, which is equating room modes to building forts. And we've all built forts as a kid. So I'm going to show you this diagram right here, which shows a really bad room. And this is actually, I thought a cube was the worst room possible. But after this research, I've realized that a double cube, which is essentially actually the king's room, uh, which was a design that was used in royalty. I think it's like 60 feet long um, by 30 feet wide and 30 feet tall. So that's actually a terrible room for acoustics, but apparently it looks very grand and big. Uh, so do not use these dimensions. These are terrible dimensions, the worst possible acoustics you could have in a room. And you'll notice here that I've drawn in what I call the blanket and then the cushions. So the room modes are like the cushions of your fort. And then the blanket is what's hanging on the cushions. You can see in this really bad room that the blanket is sagging because there's not enough cushions evenly spaced to pull the blanket taut. And when we wanna build that nice fort, we wanna have the blanket on our roof nice and taut so it's not sagging down. And so this analogy works because in the low frequency part of our rooms, these room modes are usually spaced farther and farther apart. And in the really bad rooms, like for example, this king's room with the double cube, we actually have these huge gaps, which makes our cart, our imaginary fort sag. And I want you to keep that visual because it's really helpful for understanding these 
really archaic, strange looking diagrams we have here from AMROC. Now let's take an example of a really great looking room. And this is actually from uh, Meissner, I believe is the name of the researcher who did this in 2018. So this is really new information in, in the acoustic world, which is usually goes back to the early 1900s. This is their description of the perfect room, uh, which we'll get to more in this lesson. But this room right here shows you that now we can see how the blanket is actually <laughs> hanging more taut across the low end frequency spectrum. Now you'll notice that this room is like really uh, tall. It has an 18 foot ceiling, which is totally unreasonable, but don't worry about that. I just want to use this as an explanation for how room ratios work and looking at this blanket analogy and the cushions, because as you use that, that'll help you with your own room ratios. And later on, we'll look at it again uh, with respect to these new findings in the research with the length to width ratio. But I hope that makes something super complex and weird make a little more sense when you relate it to building a fort and this the sagging blanket versus the really nice top blanket because really what the the room ratios when they're spaced evenly and they're not so far apart what we get is actually a smoothing out of the low end frequency meaning when you walk around that room and you're playing that 80 hertz tone it doesn't change in volume so much it seems like it's more consistent which is what we want in a room meant for music now, in this article, which I certainly will uh, link to down in the description below, uh, this was an article that I actually had a potential client from our community, our soundproofing community, mention it to me, which I'm so grateful for. You know, he was doing research on room ratios and he's like, hey, have you checked this out? And I was like, no, I haven't. Of course, here I am making a, a lesson on it, a YouTube video for all of you to understand this fairly complex article. I, I would recommend reading it, but you'll know that it gets very deep and to the weeds very quickly. So I hope this video is a good companion to it where I've done a lot of the, the deep reading to try to help you understand what's going on. And one of the parts of that deep in the weeds aspect of this article was a phrase called the frequency spacing index, which uh, it goes by FSI for you nerds out there. And basically what it is, is that the lower this number is, the better. So this index, let's say if it had a impossible rating of one, that would be the best. And actually in the article, it says that a rating of 1.3 is the best that could be achieved in the real world, which is what the, the Meissner uh, ratio is for A, which I'll let you know that that ratio right now, just so you guys have it, is 1 to 1.2 to 1.45. So with the width being 1, then you'd have the length and the height in that ratio there. So that is actually technically the best ratio out there. You can use other um, ratios like the Seppmeyer Volk. Um, in, in this article, I highly recommend if you're going down this room ratio uh, endeavor and you're building from scratch, meaning you can have a high ceiling height or a large space to build within, you know, it would be worth looking at some of these ratios because they are different than the usual ones I recommend. So in their research, they found that when they looked at the FSI, they found that the spacing, remember we want an even spacing. So having that 1.3 index number is really good. It means you have a great room, but they also noticed that the length to width ratios we're giving them a better FSI regardless of the ceiling height. And that led them to conclude that you can get a good even spacing of room modes in the lower frequencies from 20 to 200 hertz, um, regardless of your ceiling height changing a lot. So the ceiling height has less of an impact on the acoustics of the room than the ratio of the length to the width. And that is the important thing that we need to take away from this article. They further went on to find that the ideal length to width, width ratio that you should focus on is having a length to width ratio of 1.15 to 1.45. And that's, if you, there's nothing else you take away from this article, it's that. You don't really need to understand the acoustics behind it, although I find it fascinating. Uh, you really just need to know that when you're designing your studio, let's say you have like a capped ceiling height of eight feet you can still try to figure out a length of the studio based on this length to width ratio. So let's say your width and your ceiling height are capped like most rooms are, but you can potentially put up a wall and make your studio either longer or shorter. That's where that 1.15 to 1.45 will come in handy because you could say, okay, I have these ratios. Let me just do the math and figure out what the 1.15 or the 1 to 1.45 is. 
and I can figure out the ideal ratio for my situation, not the best thing in the world, which I can't build because I don't have 18 foot ceilings. So that said, let's take a look at this example. So here I have brought up a typical, like let's say a typical studio you would build in like a garage or a basement, maybe in a bedroom, although bedrooms tend to be even smaller. But let's say you're building in a basement and you have eight foot ceilings and you have a, a 15 foot width. Now, what would be the ideal length? So if we go back to the 1.15, we can find that the ideal length is gonna be 17.25 feet. So now we have a 15 foot wide space that's 17.25 feet long, and we have an eight foot ceiling. And you can see in this example here that I've done this, and then I've changed it to where we have a 10 foot ceiling, but we kept the length and the width similar because these this article is saying hey change the ceiling height but we keep the length and the width ratios the same we should still have a pretty good even distribution of modes in the lower frequencies and amrock is really great because it can predict and show you visually where these room modes fall so if we look at this diagram we can see that I put a big circle around where that one big axial mode actually does move to the left, meaning that remember our analogy of like the even spacing and the tot, <laughs> the cushions with the tot blanket, we actually, that will help support our imaginary blanket, thus creating a smoother frequency response in the room. So I do think going to a higher 10 foot ceiling height obviously will be better um, in some ways here, but is it drastically different? No, and according to this research with that FSI uh, index number, you still should get a fairly even uh, distribution of modes in the lower frequencies. So, whew, that was a lot of nerdy stuff right there. So what can we take from this in conclusion? So if there's anything that you should just take away from this video, it's that as you are planning your home studio, I don't really want you to focus on room modes ever, but I do think that this research helps you out with getting a little bit closer to maybe a more accurate potential in your home studio design because if your ceiling height is, is capped and your width is you know around that usual range of like 12 to 16 feet or so that our most rooms are, are made out of, then your length can change and you can really play with the length and the width ratios and not worry so much about the ceiling height. Whereas we rarely have these super tall ceilings in our residential settings. So with that said, I will say, you know, eight foot ceiling heights are fine for home recording studios, but if you're doing things like drums or you're trying to get an, a really more, you know, commercial home studio setup where you're recording bands and stuff, going up to higher ceiling heights like 10 feet, 12 feet, or even 13 feet is certainly gonna help you, especially with just the direct reflections you have from say like a drummer and having overhead mics over the cymbals. The lower the ceiling, you're gonna have quick reflections off the ceiling, even with absorption, those lower frequencies are still gonna bounce back quickly into your microphones. Um, and, and that's not gonna be ideal, it might color the sound a little bit. So with that said, you know, higher ceilings are always more ideal for that reason, but this is good news for the overall room mode response, low frequency response, that we can still have eight foot ceilings and still get a very good sounding room by adjusting our length to width ratio. All right, I hope you have found this video helpful. I found it interesting myself. I am incorporating it into my designs with my clients, and I hope you will also incorporate it as just another tool in your toolbox when designing your own home recording studios. Again, my name is Wilson Harwood. I am a professional home recording studio or studio recording studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville. It's what I do full time these days. And I'm out here to just trying to help you guys build the best home recording studio you can possible. So if you're on that journey, definitely check out my free acoustic treatment guide. It'll give you all the information you need to set up an accurate sounding home recording studio in your own home and you can download it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, I'll see you all next week with more information on soundproofing and room acoustics.